Okay, guys, uh, good morning. This is Naveen Prithiani here from UrbanForex.com. Can everyone hear me and see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Morning, morning. Okay, so let's get started here. Today we are going to discuss a little bit something on uh, market profile. Okay, this is uh, quite popular with a lot of floor traders and uh, comes in all the way from almost three decades ago. Okay, and uh, it's very popular with futures markets and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to introduce this into a little bit into Forex and uh, show you guys how it actually can have some impact in uh, Forex as well. Okay, remember. One thing that you need to know with market profile is it bases completely on volume. And how do you get volume is when you have a central exchange. For example, if you have NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange, you can get volume because everything is traded over there. Now, in Forex, there is no central exchange. There is no one area where Forex is traded. You know, and there's no one spot anywhere in the world that's like, okay, it's traded in the corner of Sydney. No. Um, so <clears throat> having that said, there is no real volume that we can measure. The only volume that we have is based on our charts and the price movement, uh, the velocity of the strength that it moves in. So, so it measures that. I mean, it comes close to it, but uh, it's not 100% accurate. That's why MP also comes up as an indicator. A thing that follows price at the end of the day even in Forex okay so that's one thing to understand now uh, okay Kev take care now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna leave all the questions told towards the end un un unless you can mention anything that you guys have uh, in terms of audio or video issues but uh, um, as far as questions are concerned we're gonna leave them towards the end I think our last video we had so many questions towards the middle and people were getting frustrated by not letting us uh, um, uh, not moving on so let's get into some of the basics of MP okay how many of you guys actually know market profile In originality, this is how market profile actually looks. There are a bunch of these little letters, okay? Okay, there are a bunch of these little letters. Now, let's go into some details about this. Now, market profile was uh, obviously it was it was created by two people, um, Mr. Peter and Mr. Mike. Okay, Peter was a Chicago board of uh, trade member. And Mike was a vice president uh, of technology at the same exchange. So um, <clears throat> now there, the, there is what we call a POC called the point of control. Okay, the point of control is where the most traded price of the day uh, happens. Now that's usually going to be the longest line. Okay. That's where most of the price has been trading. Okay, that's called a POC, or it's also referred to as the mode, M O D E, mode. Okay, now there's also what we call the value area, which is in the 70% deviation from the POC, like over here and down here. Okay, these are the value areas. And there is, this is the high value area, the low value area, okay? They're referred to as VAH for value area high and the VAL for value area low, okay? Now, so you're probably wondering, what are these little um, uh, letters? Well, what, what do they mean? Okay, I'm going to explain to you. These, these are called TPOs, okay? Time Price Opportunities, okay? which means each letter represents 30 minutes of data. Okay? In a single day there is 48 TPOs. Okay? 30 minutes you multiply that uh, into 48 of them you have 24 hours. Okay? So there's each of these is a TPO. Now, how it starts is your day starts off with 
the letter A. Okay, the letter A, and what you can see is in the first 30 minutes of the day, the market have traded in this range. This is the price the markets have been playing with in the first 30 minutes. Okay, and then when B starts, B starts from, it goes from all the way up here to down here. So you have an overview of what price is doing just by looking at this, you know, and so on and so forth. A, B, C, D, it goes all the way down and obviously until M and N. So, and this longest area is the mode or the POC, which is the most uh, happening area, okay, where a lot of the action is usually taking place, okay. Now, this entire movement is what we call a price distribution. You know, you have this like this big old curve, you know, imagine like a fat man is belly, you know. So, when you have a proper curve like this, the price is normally distributed, okay. Now, the area above or below when there's less and less, it basically means these are areas of rejection, price rejection, okay. It means that it's in the overbought or oversold area, which means price has gone too far all right everyone with me so far okay okay so now the same thing applies is uh, uh we'll, we'll, we'll get to all of that stuff now the same same, same thing applies is once the price goes uh, to this area and you see that it's being rejected you have less and less time that price is spent there. Now, for example, you see here, the price is being is starting to get rejected. It's getting less and less here, which means it's spent pretty much an hour and a half at this price. Here, uh, 30 minutes or less, and same thing here, 30 minutes or less. That means you know in these price ranges, price is getting rejected. Same thing down here. And, and these price ranges, more or less, price is getting rejected. Okay? So let's take a look at this, uh, how this looks in Forex. Now in Forex, obviously they didn't give us these letters. We have this nice indicator. For those of you who do not have this indicator, um, it's, it's here, let me show you. You can go on to uh, our urbanforex.com, scroll down, look for the group called uh, Market Profile. For those of you who want to practice Market Profile, join the discussions here and uh, post your daily trades and everything here the market profile indicator is right there as soon as you log in. We're going to have more written material and uh, presentations available here, in including this video will be available here as well. Okay, so it's all there. Now, <clears throat> this is how the market profile looks on our screen. You can see here that we have the um, deviation area here. Let me change the line color for you. So it's Okay, we have the, the deviation areas here and here. The area in the middle with the longest line, this is your POC, as you can see how price is just hovering around there. Um, this is where most of the action happens. Okay, let's remove these now. Oops. Okay, so now, how can we use this to our advantage? Here's a couple things. Now take a look at, for example, today. You see how price has been moving. There's a lot of action over here. There is quite a bit of action over here. But down here, you can see price is getting rejected. Okay, one little bar here, price is getting rejected. Telling you that this area seems to be an area that price does not um, that the larger players are not interested in putting their money, okay? Which means price will probably bounce away from it, okay? Take a look at uh, yesterday over here, on the top here, right here. You see how price just reacts from, this, from these areas? Again and again and again, right here also. This low area, Okay, and then here as well. 
So this gives you a, a heads up that, okay, this is an area that uh, it's pretty much oversold, overbought. Um, you know, larger players are not interested in these areas and they seem to be rejecting the price. They're, they're removing their flow of money from these areas. Okay, and uh, either they're reversing it or just letting it go. Over here, they didn't reverse it, but they just pretty much let it go. That's why it just started hovering. And then the price started building up again and boom, it dropped today. Okay. So, let's get this all out and let's take a look. Now, price gets rejected at these hollow spaces, you know, towards the end of these MPs or in these hollow spaces. Now, what I personally do is that I, I, I usually look at this in terms of support and resistance from these hollow areas. Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, mm, let me scroll back a little bit so I can get you guys multiple hollow areas. Okay, so now you see this area here, how it's hollow here, and then it's also hollow over here. Okay, price is being rejected from this area again and again. Now take a look at the candles that just go up and down from this area. Big candles, really big candles. This is a strong area of support resistance, not to mention if you put your line right here, you get to see price has held here, it's held here, here, and even in the past. Okay, things start to stack up. Okay, we have it hollow here yet, yet once again. So once you draw these or these hollow areas, you get to know how where the price is actually reacting from. Okay, now let's see. Let me see if I can show you one proper example. Okay. Let's see here. Now, take a look at this. <clears throat> uh, yes, it's recorded. Now, take a look at this. Let's say you have this area here that's being uh, rejected, right? It's created this tail, and we're going to draw our support resistance zones. Next day happens, also hollow over here. Price is trying to get rejected, but it didn't get rejected. It actually shot through, okay, which means strong level of support resistance here somewhere. It shot through, right? So I'm going to draw my, I'm going to bury my tail in here also. I'm going to go back a little bit to see, okay. It covers this tail, plus we have some hollow area here where the price comes down from. You see how it's very active here and then it starts going down price it, so it's going down to the rejection area so rejection area here rejection area here big candle break here okay we have price rejection area pretty much building up here and as we go into the following day as you see when the market moves up here and you see it uh, get rejected you see your zone that not a single candle has closed outside of this zone, giving you a complete ready for a drop for a south for the rest of the day. Everyone with me so far? Okay. Okay. And this area, once it drops, comes back, bounces off of it yet once again, and then drops. Next day still has an area of rejection here but this time it crosses through it crosses through and now price has gone to all new highs where we don't think it's going to come back down to this level anytime soon where we look for the next rejection areas okay but this this helps you understand that uh, where price seems to be having rejections it helps you easily also spot areas of strong support and resistance that this area must be um, where strong levels are, are holding, okay? Now rejection, you, you see rejection when these, these blue lines start going down, starts going towards the weaker side, that's a rejection. Okay, so it's pretty much like your MACD um, or stochastics, you know, but instead your rejection is when it comes down instead of the top. Okay, now your, 
your modes or your PLC areas also play a role. You know that, for example, on this particular day, your PLC line was here. The most traded area. The next day opens as it does its thing. It it reacts to this area as well, as it has some strength, because it it's a high volume trading area as per market profile. So you do see some reactions here. Okay. Now, moving on, let's take a look. Let's see if we can gather some information here. Now, do we have an area here? Let's see. Let's put our lines here. Okay, low area. Okay, rejection building up here. Our, um, we're at, we have our resistance, 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 low area here, resistance, and big candle breaks. So let's cover some of these tails. Do we have some support? Yes, we do. Now we have support here, support here, big candle breaks. So now we have support and resistance covered from this area, not to mention we have covered our rejection areas in here as well. Okay, market continues. And the following day, okay, we drew, we drew it slightly outside actually. But uh, you can see once the market gets rejected over here, it comes back down into the zone, giving you a heads up that we're going south. And boom, the market just drops. Does that make? Is this making sense of how how we use um, how we can use uh, market profile to our advantage? It just helps you. Uh, visually look at what areas must be strong support resistance now many of you guys might think oh man drawing a strong support resistance level is really difficult just look for these little dips look for these little dips you'll have an automatic idea what areas are good because so these are rejection zones okay and then this happens time after time after time you know these these areas that uh, that seem to hold you know Take a look at this zone here. If you draw from here to here, okay, you see how price gets uh, rejected one, two, three times here. Big candle break also. We go on into the future and no touch here. I don't know if it touches later on, but, and here we go. We have a slight touch here and then boom, straight north after the rejection here. Okay, so there, there's there's various ways to trade this information. One is you can wait for rejections, which is not advisable. Okay, I've seen many people uh, just trade these rejection zones and get burned like crazy because the rejection zone keeps building. You never know if it's going to stop here. How, how would you know if it stops? At the end of the day, it's an indicator that follows price um, in this particular in this particular case because we have no volume in forex okay so it's following price it's an it's an indicator now if you assume that for today this was your rejection zone over here on this particular day what if the market continues like it did over here it rejected but then it went further north how would you know it's uh this is the area where it stops you know so that's the issue that you would have. Now, the only way to, to find out these things is to match them with support room resistance, such as this thing right here, to give you a better understanding is that, is the rejection area that you're seeing, do you think it's valid? Okay, over here, yes, it matches up with our support and resistance. Also, the rejection matches up. Same thing on today's market, also lines up. Okay, and that's how you know if things start to make sense or not. Okay, does, does that make sense? So look. Okay, now the trading that happens around market profiles, 
the trading that happens around market profiles, obviously we're not going to discuss in this webinar. This webinar is for you to get familiar to market profile first. What is it actually telling you? What, what do these blue things mean? Understand that concept first. Okay. Now we're like for, for a moment, stop trying to think, how can I use this to trade? You know, forget that part because if you, if you just think, how can I use this to trade? I'm going to tell you A, B, and C. You will follow A, B, and C, and you will never get to experience what this actually tells you. First, try to, um, first try to understand what this particular indicator tries to tell you, and then we can move forward from there. Because then a trading strategy, whatever I tell you or anyone tells you, you can look at it and be like, hmm, maybe I can do it this way. Because you at least understand what it's trying to tell you. You know, so going back to um, the very basics again. Okay, high trading area. This line that here that you see here. Okay, which is the very peak. Okay, this is the highest point that this blue line goes to. Means that this is the most traded act um, traded area for today for this particular day. Same thing here. This line right here represents the most traded area. Okay, it's the highest blue bar from the bottom to top. Okay, now these bars, when, when the day starts, there's no bars. They fluctuate as the price starts to fluctuate. Okay, and each little um, little cube that it builds is represented of 30 minutes of data. Okay, now, next thing. These are value area highs and these are value area lows. Okay, these areas are also of importance, which tells you that the markets are, these are the areas that the markets like to be playing in. Okay, and then outside of these areas, you're getting a, a stronger rejection areas. Okay, whenever the blue lines are getting lower and lower towards uh, zero, which means price, there is not much action there, which means most likely price is going to turn around. Okay, take a look at this. We have this little rejection area here. Okay, you can see how small it is. Is it the smallest for the day? Okay, pretty much. It's the smallest area here. Now, do we have anything to confirm that this area of the market might turn around? Yeah, we have a a pattern that we can see like okay this looks like a pattern that might turn around the direction of the market you know you so you need to find additional things like trading this alone is very dangerous you need to find additional things that that uh, complement this okay so now let's move forward and uh, let's look at today's today's date today's date we had one area on top that was quite small which the market reacted from. And then we had one area down here on EURUSD, which the market reacted from also. Now you can see down here, the market got rejected and lots of action here. It's very strong here. It's been building up. Now, what is this line? This is not the highest trading for today. This is coming in from yesterday. Okay. So now, you'll see that the, the, for today's strong area is up here. And uh, yesterday's strong area is down here. And not only is the price getting rejected, we're creating exhaustion candles. What else do we know from this information? Do we have a level of support resistance? Okay, yes we do. We have support, we have resistance, we have big candle break, big candle break. Do we have any data in the past from here? Big candle break, possible resistance, and that's it. We don't have much much to work on because for a lot of our pairs that are recently working, we're at all-time highs. So we don't have much information that we can uh, work on. Okay. Now, pound. Let's take a look at pound. <clears throat> Do we have anything today? Okay. We have re rejection right here. You see this? Now the markets have moved from all the way from here to here to here. What do we know? 
if I if I draw a line horizontally like this, this is the lowest it has gone all day until now. Now it's got even tighter. It's gone till here. Okay? And we had this area here. Now, since we have this area, it's gone tighter and we have price reacting from here. What do we know? Is this is this area has some significance? Well, let's find out. You know, I don't know. I, I can't uh, just assume and put all my trust onto this indicator because it can change any moment. So, but I'm going to check. Does this area have some significance? I'm going to scroll back. First thing is we have a pocket of low zone here. Another thing was we have an area here. Let's draw this zone and let's move further back and let's see. Okay, here we go. Take a look at this area. 28 January, we picked all three of those bottoms plus low pocket area. We were also considering low pocket um, rejection zone on 29 January. Let's go further back, see if there's any more data. And looks like that's it for now. Yeah, looks like that's it for now. We have so we have a little bit of information here. Seems feasible that this area is going to drop from here. Okay, the market has dropped. It's come to its uh, strong trading point of the day. Lots of action happening here again. People are starting to put in some money. Possible goes short from here. Let's check out some other pairs. Now, we have CAD um, getting rejected from this line. This line comes in from yesterday, which is the most, uh, the POC, point of control, also the mode. Okay, this is the most happening area of yesterday. Price is getting rejected there, plus we have only one bar here. Okay, can it be possibly rejected from here? We don't know. We'd have to check support and resistance and low pocket areas to understand. Okay, lots of tails going up and down here. Let's take a look at another pair to see if there's something more clear that we can work with. How about uh, Swiss franc? Okay, how about Swiss franc in this area? Does this area seem feasible? Low pocket area, price getting rejected, exhaustion candle being formed. Does this area seem about right? Let's. Can we get any additional confirmation from the past? Okay, big candle break. A price being rejected here. Market profile showing rejection. Let's go further back. Anything else? Okay, big candle break. Resistance, big candle break. Support, big candle break. There we go. Also, rejection areas on the if you sit, if you take a look at these uh, blue areas, rejection zones also. So this seems to be an area that uh, might have some strength. Okay, rejection zones in the blue blue areas, and big candle breaks. So seems like an ideal area for someone to go short from. Okay, everyone, everyone uh, with me so far? Yes, yes, okay. Let's take a look at some other pairs that uh, show some uh, signs today. Gold is really bright. Uh, so you confirm support resistance with MP or MP with support resistance? It's uh, I, I confirm MP with support resistance because now, right now on gold, one hour ago, gold came to this area and turned around. Um, or once it came to this area, we saw this one little bar here showing price rejection. Now, just based on this information alone, I cannot place a trade because it's too risky. Because what if it goes further down south and then this area can start building up? 
that more trading activity happens here. Okay, so it came down to here, we had one bar, but I want to check, is this area useful? So I put my line there, and then I check, what do we have from this area? Well, we have some big candle breaks, we have support, we have resistance, we have a pocket of low area here. Okay, big candle break, support once again, okay, rejection area on the market profile. Big candle break, rejection area, okay, rejection area and resistance. We have both support, resistance, and rejection plus big candle break. Everything gives you a heads up that this area is the money maker. Does that make sense? Hello, Linda. Okay. So uh, that's okay. So, uh, Sardar, does that does that make sense for this one? Uh, yeah, I'll explain uh, one more time. Let's let's take a look at another pair and uh, see if there's an example. You guys like uh, Japanese yen pairs? Let's take a look at the beast. Oh, but it's also all time highs. Okay, SNR FTW. Yeah, yeah, support and resistance. I, I, I like I said, I, I personally like I mentioned to you guys in the previous webinars of support resistance that if you do not understand support resistance everything is going to be difficult and if you do understand support resistance everything becomes easy because at the end of the day it's all about support and resistance because you see that on your charts Okay, let's take a look at uh, US dollar Japanese and see if we can get something from here. Scroll back randomly. Okay, let's see some uh, price rejection zones. Okay, take a look at this. The low of this day. Okay, let's get uh, the areas here. No single body coming out. Rejection area plus it's a rejection starts here. We're going to take this and put it together with this. We have this area. Does it go back, further back? Yeah, it makes sense. Because even further back, we cover these areas of uh, rejection areas. So we're going to go forward and see, can we use this on uh, the following days? Now, 21st January, the market hovers inside, breaks through, reacts to the zone and goes and then the following day it rejects the price from here and then drops okay it actually took this level yeah this area here one two three rejection areas and then the fourth one here and price drops can we confirm uh, trend and uh, momentum with market profile? Uh, no, not uh, momentum. Trend also no. It's hard to predict the trend. There are there are many various strategies. They talk about that. If you have your bell curve here for two consecutive days, then uh, you know we're going short. Or if you have a B shape, you know where you have a big tail on top and then you have a B or a P. You know, there's many different methods they come up with, but it's the same as, for example, how many of you guys have heard of uh, CCI, you know? So even the CCI, um, they take an average indicator CCI and then they put a million patterns on it, like, oh, okay, this is the ghost formation, this is the cross-through formation. 
you know so you can actually put any formation on anything that you want but is it simple for you to understand and at the end of the day it all comes down to you are unable to capture the market completely okay but people always try they do everything in their possible strength to capture the market you know from front to end you know, hey we do it you know we have a forecasting business we do it so but to be able to capture the market 100 percent is is impossible okay all right uh, so let's go through some questions and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close the webinar so okay so one at a time so can we um, top and bottom of NPs as overbought, oversold zones as we do with stochastics? Yes, that is the that is um, the concept, Sardar. But how do you know which is the top and which is the bottom? That's the question to ask yourself. You need a confirmation um, with that. Okay, Glenn Naveen, isn't it true that these short time frames are taken out of context? Isn't there a way to look at long time frame TPOs to see the original point of the bell, bell, uh, bell curve? Yes. Yes, that's all. Actually, uh, it can be quite useful when you look at uh, the most trading areas from a higher time frame, such as the four hours or something like that, or even the daily. Okay, but usually, Glenn, they're designed to have uh, forty periods uh, in a day, which means uh, you know it covers like one day's action. So, using information from a higher time frame might be a little bit risky. I don't know if it's designed for a higher time frame. Okay, Pete seems to be seems to be just an extra confirmation. Yes, that that's pretty much it. Um, Pete, I, I use it to actually understand that is this area strong support resistant? Yeah, but exactly like Sky says, it makes uh, it makes it easy to visualize support and resistance. Yes, for those of you who are having tough times to draw support and resistance, simply just uh, get these low areas. Um, let me move it to these low areas. Okay, I have this low pocket area, and I'm like, okay, what is this area? Do I have support resistance? Yes, I do. Right here. Big candle break. Support, resistance. And then all you need to do is just refine it. And then the market then uh, reacts from these areas in the future. Um, a better time frame to trade on this, I would, I would personally say one hour. One hour would be the ideal spot. Okay, um, so Dan Naveen, sorry to be a bug, but you have you tried to study MP with footprint charts? No, not with footprint charts. Okay, I wanted to bring out the, the basics of MP, what MP basically does. Okay, it just tries to measure um, trading activity. That's the very basics of what MP is trying to tell you. Where is the trading activity happening? And where is less trading act activity happening? Okay. 30 minutes. It's the same, it's the same piece of information. You get the same piece of information actually. Now in, in fact, even in the, in, the, in the indicator, you can actually adjust when it starts, the day starting hour, in case you wanted to start on a specific uh, session. You can do that also. My profile's time frame is set to daily. If you set it to weekly, you can actually uh, use it on a higher time frame. But I've personally set it to daily as I like to see what's going on within my day. Okay. And you can adjust, you know, um, other things such as the value area, high, low areas. Um, if you want to turn off the, val uh, the, the strongest areas, you can turn that off as well. So there's a lot of options. It's a really nice, nicely built indicator. Uh, just need to change that. Yes, yes. Um, why not to 30 minutes? Okay, you really emphasize on the valley um, of the MP, but what about the value area high and value area low and POC? Can you give us something to work with those? Um, now, the thing with this is when you have your value area highs and value area lows, they hold, they hold significance. These are the areas where... Okay, inside your value area high and low, you will have obviously your mode. 
this high and low is pretty much just your deviation that's your 70% deviation that comes from this area which tells you that in this area is where the activity has happened okay everything else if you take a look outside this area the markets have slowed slowed down okay let's take a look at uh, the value areas here it's here and here okay these are your value areas for this day and then you have stronger rejections outside of it so now the rejections you get inside your value area I wouldn't quite use as they might be temporary but the ones outside of it seem to be quite powerful your value areas will change as price moves that's for sure They're, they don't stay solid as once these are built these are built but your value areas change as time moves um, so there are, what about double profile MP I haven't used that I haven't used that which has two bell shaped curves within one day ah okay are you talking about uh, these formation let me let me find you one in fact today today on euro USD we have double bells right here like a B uh, capital B sorry we have this here it's here it's just telling you that the price is distributed in a higher higher price over here and it's over here this is where all the distribution is happening okay when you have one bell curve it, you you have your your normal distribution happening where the price is being spread out properly Yeah, in fact, uh, like I said, I've seen many of you guys uh, trade this. Um, for example, Donnie and uh, Abhinav on uh, Urban Forex. I've seen them post some charts of how they're using SNR with uh, MP. And, you know, results are pretty good. Quite phenomenal, actually. So try them out. Actually, try them out. Get a, get a hang of it, get used to it, because next week we're going to discuss uh, strategy and trades using MP. As of right now, you guys have the very basics of the understanding of MP. Um, so, so do this. Um, join the group over here called Market Profile and get your indicator and check them out throughout the ne until next Wednesday comes along. Try them. You know, add them onto your screens, take screenshots, share them with us. And find out, uh, you know, are you able to capture the right zones or rejection areas? Um, these rejection areas are really good because they can be the tops or bottoms of the markets. Okay. Now, if price does not get rejected in that area, it goes boom, it goes straight through. Okay. Um, Dennis, the indicator is used as market profile. It's available in the market profile group. Okay, here's the link in case you guys don't know where the group is. It's right here. And uh, you can simply join the group. There's We can create discussions and everything it will be start, start being created from tomorrow. Okay, any final questions before we go? Any, uh, you guys want me to do any recap or anything? Yeah, next week we have a uh, um, webinar with uh, Sardar as well um, on the 14th of February that discusses uh, how we can trade his analysis. He posts, he's been posting his analysis for uh, uh, over half a year now and uh, you know they've been very, very good. A lot of people have been following him. He has a big following base uh, on Urban Forex and off of Urban Forex through our, a lot of our Facebook pages and social medias. So... Um, it would be good to see uh, a refined direction that uh, Sardar himself gives us on how we can trade this. So that will be quite uh, um, educational as well. Um, Gartley patterns. Yeah, anything else that you guys want to learn? We actually have a topic in the discussion that says, what do you want to learn? You know, we can look into it. We can study it. We can open it up and we can present it to you guys as that uh, how we look into this and go on uh, move from there okay yeah yeah you'll you'll have lots of fun you'll have lots of fun uh, like I said 
everyone here most likely is going to be in your webinar so there so uh, and we're, we're here to support you and we're actually thankful that you're sharing with us so it's great uh, money I've sent you a message on urban forex so I hope you can reply to it yes uh, as I get to it I, I've as you can see I have uh, um, some emails pending here as I get to it I will definitely approach all of you guys whoever sent me an email but Try to ask your questions on the main page as much as possible. Um, somebody's bound to answer your question faster than I can. But uh, if you do send them to me, that's fine. I will get to you. But please uh, be patient. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Said so. Um, try them out. Um, weekly challenge information. You're talking about support resistance weekly challenge. Yes. That has uh, that is going to be beginning on Monday, I believe, and it's going to continue for a week. And uh, those of you who have joined need to drop us an email. We, you guys will be added to it. And uh, we haven't got any responses yet on who wants to join the competition, but I will still be here trading support resistance um, in the competition myself. Um, it's been a while since I've actually traded, so uh, it'll be good fun for me to get back into the game as well. So. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close the webinar now. Thank you all for attending, and uh, uh, I will see you all on the next webinar, which is next Wednesday, and uh, you guys can join in on the market profile conversation, and we'll take it from there. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.